All right. So welcome back, everybody. I have a special guest, Reverend Clo Clotia. Did I say it right, Reverend? You absolutely Clotia. Did. All right. Clotia Mack. She is here with us to talk about forgiveness. Now, mm -hmm. you guys know I put the um, little video up about God forgives us. I forgive myself and therefore I can forgive you. So yeah. we're going to have a little talk about forgiveness because it's hard for some people. Forgiveness yeah. is like that subject you don't want to talk about. So mm -hmm. Reverend Crow, tell us a little bit about yourself so our audience will know who you are. Well, I am Clotia. Um, and I am a teacher. I am a mother of four, three adults and one middle schooler who was in here kissing me before we started recording. And I am an empowerment coach. And so I help women. I help move and shift women, especially women in leadership who may be stuck, who may be able to provide answers for everybody else, but just can't seem to get unstuck for themselves. Um, I'm an editor, so I help people bring their their stories to life. I do a lot, a lot of things. I, I'm a speaker. Um, I don't want to say motivational. You feel motivated, but we get down to the nitty gritty. We get down to the truth when I go places, and so people know when I come, I come with the fire to help people be set free. And forgiveness is a part of that freedom that I love to teach. Um, it was birthed from um, an infidelity. In my marriage, it was birthed from me doing a lot of goofy things, even as a woman, even as a Christian woman, um, needing to forgive myself. It was birthed from church hurt, lots of church hurt. It was birthed from rejection and this place where unforgiveness kept me in prison. And I finally realized by the grace of God. That forgiveness is a gift that I give to myself. It's not for other people. It is for me. And so when I realize that I can give myself that gift, and I love what you said, God forgives me, I forgive myself, so I can forgive you. That is like it in a nutshell. That's it in a nutshell. So I began to study and really try to figure out what this forgiveness thing was. All right. So I, I tell you, <clears throat> when I thought about February, everybody thinks about Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And all I could think about, God put on my heart, was forgiveness. Because um, as a personal note, it I had a hard time overcoming pain and hurt. Usually mm -hmm. when you talk about forgiveness, people say, well, I, I got hurt so bad. Yes. I got so, hurt so bad. So what do you think is the main roadblock that prevents people from even considering forgiveness. Mm -hmm. you, th this is going to sound really elementary, but I believe the first and biggest hurdle that people need to get over is realizing that they can forgive. And as an empowerment coach, that's what I, I empower people and you empower people with knowledge. And just the mere fact that people can say, wait, 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 hold on. You mean to tell me my ex-husband could have cheated with my best friend, married her. They have a whole new family. The people on my job lied on me. I lost my job. I was molested when I was three. And you telling me, hold on, what kind of magic formula you got? You telling me I can forgive all three of those people and live a happy life after that? Mm -mm. No, I don't believe you. Terry K, it's as simple as you can do it. Once you understand what it is, and what it's and what not. It's not. That was that my commission from God. God. Teach my people how to forgive. And I'm like, like okay. Uh, so, you know, and me being a teacher, I'm like, oh, I can get down with that. Teach them how. Because people have looked at the scriptures, right? And they, they understand that the scripture is the word of God and it's what I need to do. But when we say, hey, if you want God to forgive you, you have to forgive others. That's, That's nice. nice. That is the That's word of God. Nice. Matthew 6, 14 is where it is. I wrote it down so I would not misquote the word. And so <laughs> know. we know that that's the word, but it's always the how. And yeah. me understanding that as a teacher, I give that how. A lot of times teachers give the what, and they leave you on a high, and then you get in your car and you're like, um, 
how do I do that? And mm -hmm. so just knowing you have a choice, despite yeah. whatever, despite the magnitude of the pain, despite how long ago it happened, knowing that you have a choice, that's the first thing. And then the second hurdle is understanding this choice is for your benefit. Always. This is not for the other person's benefit. This is for your benefit, watchers. Audience. And I and I think that point right there is what does not go through people's head. They don't get to that. Where, how mm -hmm. is that going to benefit me? Right. It, it's like if, if you have it explained to you, and I'm going to let you explain it. But mm -hmm. once you have it explained to you and you receive it, yeah. the light comes on. And it has been people who have sat in my forgiveness classes when I first started teaching them probably three maybe three or four years ago, and they'll come up to me and say, you know, I still use what you told me. And I'm like, yes, because that's all we ever want. Audience, Terry Kay and I and every other podcaster who is really doing something, doing something. That's all we ever want is for you to use what we've given you. We don't care if it's one person who gets a nugget. Go back and use what we're giving you, the information that we told you. Use something from any of the guests that Terry K has had on, use it. Live a life with intention. And that is one thing that forgiveness is, Terry K. It's intentional. It is not what I haven't thought about it lately. Well, I haven't seen the person because, baby, when you see them and that yuck comes up, because I call it the yuck. It's like that, that nasty bologna taste in the back of your throat when you burp. And you oh like, my God. That is that. That taste is nasty. You like, I need water. It's that nasty taste right there. Oh when you see the person. <laughs> then you know that you have not forgiven. It's the baloney. It's the baloney okay. in the back of your throat. <laughs> I, t I tell you, you know, the thing about it is it's 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 something intentional. It makes me remember in that movie, Why Did I Get Married? Mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. Jill Scott met the other lady who mm -hmm. took her husband in the bathroom and she yes. was talking about, you know, I wonder what I would do when I saw you. And it's the fact the forgiveness came over her, which prevented her from even doing some crazy stuff. Because mm -hmm. once you go crazy, you can't mm -hmm. take it back. You know, yes. but it's, it's just like you said, preparing yourself and doing the work. It's just like you brush your teeth every day so that when you go to the dentist, you don't have cavities. It you really know, you is. Practice. The, it's a practice of forgiveness. It is a practice. It's a practice. And it allows you to let the past go. It allows you to grieve it in a healthy way because our feelings are very valid. Yeah. I love to tell the example of when I went into the prisons. And I was teaching forgiveness and, you know, you got these crowd of women and they're like, oh, okay, okay. And I have this one very tall, large lady and I'm like, Jesus, I don't know what's going on right now. But if she gets up out of her seat, I hope my insurance is in order. I hope my kids know where to find my passwords because I don't, you know, I ain't never fought nobody that be. I don't know if it's going to turn out well. And she said to me, but what if you don't want to forgive? And I said, well, tell me about it. And so, um, basically, long story short, her husband had impregnated someone and she took the woman in, not knowing that the lady was having relations with her husband. So she had taken the woman and her children in and the lady was pregnant with her husband's child. She said, I want to kill that baby and kill her. I said, I understand because when I'm teaching, I can never, I never want to invalidate a person's pain. I said, and you might not be ready, but when you are, you have these tools to begin the work. And so she, she calmed down, but tears just ran down her cheeks. And I have heard so many stories of hurt and pain. And Terry K, there's not one person that I am able to say, oh, you don't have to forgive. That was so horrific. That was so long ago. You don't have to forgive. You're okay. Go ahead and live your life without forgiving. Because I understand that the detriment comes to the person who holds the offense who holds the poison, who holds the unforgiveness. And I want to say this really quickly. Mm -hmm. I define unforgiveness as a self-imposed internal imprisonment. It's wow. self-imposed. It's self-imposed. And as much as we don't think that it is, it's self-imposed. It means that I am not willing. And really, Terry K, people to admit that first, 
that's really the first step. Even if yeah. you say, I'm not willing to forgive, at least you know you have a choice. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That first hole yeah. hurdle, at least you're saying, I know I have a choice and I'm not ready to take that step right now. I can do nothing but honor a person who's real like that and says, I'm not ready yet. Yeah. Like, that's, okay, an, you know, that's an empowerment step right there. Right there. You know? mm -hmm. Right there. And so I respect that. I respect people's journeys. I teach what I teach them. And then I support them on their journeys. My pastor just started something at church where she's telling people, okay, we have these forgiveness. She said she's up at the altar and she's praying with people and people are unloading. And I need to forgive this person and that person. And they did this and that did that. And that did, I, she sent them right to me. I want you to call Rev. And um, she's going to help you out. I said, because that's a lot to, for you to unpack <laughs> at the altar call. So um, it is self-imposed and it's internal because we could play it off so well. And it's something that we, in order to heal, you must forgive. That is yeah. really flat out. In order to heal and move on into the Ephesians 2.10 life, God said, I have already planned yeah. a good life for you. I've already ordained your steps. And you sitting up here, can't forgive. I'm going to help you. I just need you to make a decision. If you make a decision, I will come and partner with you. And this is what people don't understand as well. God will partner with us in our pain. It's not All just like, okay, I'm going to forgive and I don't know what to do. He will mm -hmm. tailor make a journey just for you because he knows the intricacies of your pain. He knows if you still have to talk to that person, see that person, co-parent with that person, work with that person, love on that person, serve that person, right? When we talk yes. about church, you forgive the people, but you still got to serve them because God ain't released you yet. He like, no, you can't leave yet. You like, what? So you ain't see what they <laughs> You ain't see what they just did, and I still got to pay my tithes here and serve here. Are you kidding? with the people, the Judases? Are you serious right now? Yes. I'm like, no. The power of the Holy Spirit is so cold. Yes. When you talk about forgiveness. To me, Terry K, it takes longer when you don't let God help you. Can you do it without God's help? You can have a superficial, you, you could work it out, but when you have God's help, it's just different. Well, I'm just going. To, I'm just going to piggyback, and I don't mean to interrupt you, no, but I I don't know personally how you can do it without God's help mm -hmm. because you, like you said, it'll be superficial. You'll mm -hmm. think you're doing it, but to totally release and cleanse your heart, mm -hmm. you have to remember how much God has forgiven you. You know, mm -hmm. if that self reflection is that like, alone I, right there. I, I have not met a perfect person yet, and I've been here 62 years. But <laughs> when I think about over back, when they say, when I look back over mm -hmm. my life, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, is all I can say. Yeah. Over and over and over. And with God's help, that, that's what helped me to understand that I could forgive because I, you know, sometimes the hurt goes so deep. Like you said, that lady tears just came down. The hurt goes so yeah. deep. But when you, I believe that God always works through you. Sometimes yeah. we say, well, God do this to that person or change that person or do this. But for me, he's always worked on me. You know, I'll, I'll pray for something, but then he'll tap me and say, okay, right. sweet. Now, what about you? <laughs> you like, what about that? I, I, right. I didn't really come to talk about, like, I was telling you about what had happened. He like, no, what had happened was it's something in you that I also need to work out. You are so right. And right. I've learned now, at like you said, at this older age to just embrace that. But at first I'm like, and you not fair. I just know what I'm coming to talk to you about. <laughs> That's not it. That's not that's, that's not, not it. On, that's not what's on the table right now. <laughs> God, God is he's just so gracious with you. I mean, you even me in it. your mess and with forgiveness, like I said, it's it's it always for me, it always had to come back to my part in it. You mm -hmm. know, when you I could even say, well, okay, I didn't beat myself up. My husband beat me up. Not mm -hmm. my husband didn't beat me up, mm -hmm. but I could say I but it's like you have to understand that what happened to you doesn't make you you. That's right. That doesn't make who you are, I guess mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. God is, is doing a personal thing with you, with the yeah. forgiveness. He's not trying to get you to understand what happened to you. 
Mm-hmm. You know, for, for me, it's like some of the stuff that, that happened to me, I will never understand. Yeah. I don't really even want to because then I would be God because God only knows what goes yes. through people's minds. Yes. yes. But the fact that in that bad situation, he took the time to work on me mm-hmm. and to help me find out who I am in him, help me gift. to be able to you know, to, to release that yeah. other person. Cause that other person is not responsible for my life. No. God knows. Mm-hmm. That's a that's gift. A gift. And that's yeah. a quote that I that frequently tell people. Um, and I, it was an anonymous, I don't know who said it, but it says you may not have been responsible for the hurt, but you are responsible for the healing. And so, like you said, like that the way <laughs> What we need to know, the things that we think we need to know in order to forgive, we don't need to know. Why this person, that that takes a lot of emotional energy. What we need to know is that according to Romans 8, 28, all things work. And the way God gently explained it to me, he loves just giving me little one-liners. What do I What do I mean when I say all? I'm like, I know where you're going with this. I, I, I know where you're going with this. I don't even want to ask the question. I get get the question. What do I mean when I say all? I'm like, all. So we can't qualify the things that have happened to us and say, well, God is going to work all things for my good because I love him except for this, because then that's not all. That is not all. So he said, I work all things. So I may not ever know why things have happened. We may not ever know why things have happened, but we do know because of the word of God, he's working all things. And my thing is this, if I was having a conversation with someone, something happened to her, she said she did not know until 27 years later why it happened when she encountered someone and had a conversation. She didn't go into specifics, but it made me think if I could invite God to dinner, and have a conversation with him about some of the things that have happened because we know that he knows everything that happens. He works, he works it out, and then he goes, he works the end to the beginning. I probably would get up more confused than I was when I sat down because <laughs> he says my thoughts are not your thoughts. I, I probably could not fathom that he needed me to go through what I went through because he knew I would get to where I am now so that I can minister to someone else who would then go travel to Africa and start a church. I mean, we don't know all the parts and the pieces. And so we think, well, in order to forgive, I need to know why. And in order to forgive, that person has to apologize. I come and chop down all those myths like, I, I nope. You waiting on an apology? What if they die and apologize? So you're going to be in prison and walk around here bitter and don't nobody want to be around you because you're angry and you because you can't stop talking about the situation. They dead mm-hmm. and gone. Yeah. So you giving that much power to somebody because you won't forgive because they won't acknowledge what they did. Yep. I'm going to leave you on in your cage. But most people get it. They're like, wait a minute. And it goes back to what? Choice. It goes yep. back to empowerment. You do not need an apology. Stop right. saying if they just apologize, mm-mm, because then you're gonna want to know why, and then you're gonna yep. know how long, and then you're gonna want to no, know. Th- no, they don't. If they do, that's great. But how how do we know that they even mean it? Most people who are hurt just hurt people, they don't they don't even know why. Yeah, why you cheat? Mm, I don't know, they can't give you no whys. <laughs> yep, yeah, walk in freedom until somebody tells me why, girl. Don't you do it. Okay, do it. I'm I'm telling you, my willingness to accept God's help, period, is not in anybody else's hand. No, I ain't going out like that. And and that's really, excuse me, that's a point that some people, I don't know if it's ego Mm -hmm. or, or, or lack of humility. That, that that's the point that just roadblocks people from mm-hmm. understanding this forgiveness tip. Yes. And, and I'm not judging because I was on that tip for mm-hmm. a long time. I was on it for a long, long time with several different family members and, and this yeah. and that and the other. And then if you get the luxury of getting of age, you start to understand that some things aren't as important as you thought they were. 
in in getting past something. Mm -hmm. you, you get to understand that all things work together for mm -hmm. those who love for good for those who love. You start yes. to understand some things you do. if you if you have the luxury of getting older that you just don't get in the moment when you're young. And mm -hmm. I'm not throwing nothing on young people because a lot of young people have been through some old people stuff. Come on. You know, mm -hmm. and God bless them because like we we used to go to the juvenile justice center too and it's like you know, how did you make it? Mm -hmm. How did what, what, it's like some people want to put a lot of stuff on these young people, but there's a reason why they're, they're absolutely, like, you know, and, and as, as an older person who, and that's what, like, with your when you get on your podcast and you talk about what you're talking about, it's because you've lived it and God has given you that ability to express it to help other women or to help other men come to where he wants them to be like you yes said. yes you know and that's what my um, woman at the well ministry is about you know if you meet jesus at the well it's not never just for you mm. it's, it's it's for you to just like she did run and tell it I because <laughs> You know, I, I tell you, and this forgiveness tip, and I we could talk for 17 hours about it because really there's, there's so many different aspects, but I, I love the fact that you make it plain and easy for people. You know, yes. it's just recognizing the fact that you, you're not able to forgive. You say that's the first step. And, and then knowing that you have a choice is the second step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, what other steps so we can um, go through? Cause I know some people get your pen and paper now. Yes. Get your pen and Whenever you see my name, you need to have pen and paper. Yep. Cause the teacher will be you checking you for notes and I'm going to give you some life work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So take us through the, mm -hmm. the process to get people started. Cause some folks need to know how to get yeah. started. Yeah. And you know what too, Cherry K, before I say the next step, and some people need it practical like that. They need it practical like that because we've we've made it an enigma. Ooh, forgiveness. We put this this hazy fog around the word like it's like ooh. No, I'm gonna tell you practically how to get this done. So okay. first, we talked about knowing you have a choice. The second is we understand that we don't need an apology and things like that. So there are some things that you need to understand before you start the choice. Um, or before you make the decision, one is that you don't need an apology. Okay. Two, forgiveness does not always mean reconciliation. It doesn't yep. always mean reconciliation. Some people are who they are, and things happen sometime, and God exposes people sometime because it's time to move on from the relationship, from the friendship, from the job, from the church whatever it is, but you can still move with the heart of forgiveness, right? So it does not mean that you are still going to be in fellowship with that person or that situation, okay? A lot of people, again, because of the misconceptions that they have about forgiveness, they don't understand what it is. And so it keeps them from doing that because they think, I forgive, I'm happy, we're back like we used to be. No, they think it's a one-time decision, but it's actually a series of choices. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness a is a series of choices. When I I was teaching forgiveness and um, got the news that the woman who had the child with my husband at the time was engaged and this guy was making $100,000 and they was all happy and I'm sitting up here still single and stupid. Uh -uh. And so immediately, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Girl, that yuck, that baloney came right here. That yuck. And I was angry. That's yeah. another step. A acknowledge where you are. Give homage to your feelings. Say it hurt. Yes. Say you ain't gonna see with Christians, we have a we be too fake. We we too. And yes, I said we be the English teacher said we be, we be too fake. <laughs> I'm writing an ebook about this authentic conversations with God. God already knows why are we walking around? Oh, I, I praise the Lord. No, you don't. You depressed. No. He know you. He made you. He know you. He know you. The dialogue is for your deliverance. Mm 
Right. He already right. know. It's so you can get free. So stop saying, oh, that happened so long ago. I have moved on. I know someone who has been married to her love for 20, over 20 years, happily married. He treats her like a queen. Do you know she wants to write a book? And she said, I realize I'm still mad at my ex-husband. Now, Terry Kay, she has been married to the love of her life oh for over God. 20 years. Do you know that for over 20 years, that residue of anger with her ex-husband sat in her and, check this out, sat in that relationship? Because don't think that you're going to get into the relationship with nobody and all that residue and toxicity ain't coming with you. It's coming. It's, with you. it's, it's coming, coming with, with you. you. So I said, wow, what now? So I said, you're going to have a conversation with your ex-husband? She said, yeah. I said, yeah, because we got to get rid of that. Because that that's holding her up from writing the book. She literally had to stop and she's like, oh, I realized I'm still angry at him. These are the games that we play. This is how our mind can trick mm -hmm. us into thinking we're okay. Oh, I'm in love. I done moved on. I ain't thinking about that, honey. Let the right <laughs> situation come up. This is why we need God. Because he yeah. will show us. It's yeah. a little bit of that right there. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, no. But. God always greets us with grace, just like you said. Yes. It's not to condemn us. It's not to make us feel less than worthy of being his son or his daughter. It's to show us this little part right here is holding you up in true happiness. I know you got a taste of it. Mm -mm -mm. You got a taste. Of it. I want to give you a plate. Yes. You a five course meal of joy. Hey. And that little bit you hold on to is that little, it's that, that little taste of baloney. A little taste of baloney. Wash it down with water. I think you okay. I don't want you to deal with that. It's always to move us forward in momentum into a better version of ourselves. And then for us to go, like Jesus said, I pray your faith fail not. And when you convert it, when you come back, go and help your brother and sister. And that's what we're doing this morning. Yes. So brother and sister, because we like, honey, y'all, we didn't travel. This journey of forgiveness and know Ooh. that as long as we alive, there's gonna be some more folks that we gonna have to forgive, some more times that we gonna have to forgive ourselves, and yes. other times that we gonna have to ask for forgiveness. It's called L I F E life. Okay, life. <laughs> flesh life. Yes, okay. yes, ongoing, <laughs> ongoing, and that that's the thing, Terry K. That is the thing that forgiveness is an ongoing process. Yep. And you show great yourself grace in the process and you get educated. Why do we stand in line for hours for an iPhone, but we won't go talk to a therapist for 60 minutes? I don't understand that. We won't read an article for 12 minutes that tells us how to forgive, that gives us practical steps. We won't get a coach. We the practical thing, we'll go get out, we'll sit in a in a hair chair and get sewn up with weeds for five hours. I said, now if you care more about your sewing than your soul, you got a problem. Girl, some people don't even understand the power that you're giving up by not connecting. Come on, say not that connecting. again. The power that you're giving up. That you're giving up, okay. I'm telling you, it, it's like, call me a Jesus freak if you want, <laughs> because I walk through sometimes at my job, I'll be like, ooh, Jesus, ooh, and then people look, I'm like, mm-hmm, I'm like, ooh, Jesus, because when I meet God, he's going to be like, I know, I know you, <laughs> I know you. <laughs> I do not want to hear them words, get away from me, I never done. Yes, you do. Yes, uh -huh. you do. I'm living for them words, honey, well done. I'm okay. I that helped me to forgive. I don't want nobody standing between God telling me them words. I want that big, I want pink diamonds. Oh, girl. Because I look, that's my favorite color. Pink Rainbow. diamonds, Jesus. I'm, I'm going to lay that Jesus' feet, but why I can just see you and touch it. Can I have pink? Big, you know, it to fit my little peanut head. Nice, perfect crown with pink diamonds. It's going to be cute. Because ain't nobody just, worth it. Nobody is crazy. worth my space and my soul. And hey, those look. are the practical things, Terry K. Yeah. Nobody is worth that space in our soul. No. Your, your husband now should not be dealing with tons and tons and tons of residue of what happened with any other relationship. The people mm -hmm. on your job now, the people at your church now, the, your friends now should not be dealing with like, dad, girl, that happened mm -hmm. when you was 13. You still... It's yeah. residue and people can tell. I know just yeah. as clearly when people... It's the, the bitterness, the anger, the insecurity, all that. A lot of that stems from unforgiveness. And I'm like, oh, I got to be careful with this person because mm -hmm. they, I can become a casualty 
Uh, yeah. Because they, they ain't willing to deal with some stuff. Mm -mm, I'll be, I pray for you from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, that, that discernment kicks in when you're, when you're one with the spirit, that discernment kicks in. And it's not that I don't want to be around you, but it's just, I have to keep have myself to in perfect peace. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm telling you, there was nothing when I finally realized, and, and I, I, I had to go to therapy. Mm -hmm. I had to go to therapy for years. God bless my therapist. I love her. To to understand that I was not forgiving, you know, because some people think, like you said, they've forgiven and they haven't. And then to get when you realize that you have truly forgiven somebody, the 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 weight that's lifted off of you, it it's unbelievable. Ooh. Only people who've done it know because you. You know, once you've done it, you know, it's like you can't even explain. It's it's like it is. And you do. You never want to go back to bondage again. And it's what you said so beautifully, Terry K. It is. It becomes a practice. So, girl, now when certain stuff happen, I'm like, honey, I was married 16 years and forgave a man who had a whole child on me. You think you're not speaking to me? It's going, girl, bye. That ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's you. That ain't nothing. You think you, leave me, you don't like me. You said this to me. You didn't let me pray. You didn't let me on your program. Do you think that? Look at my face. Do you think that that means something to me? It becomes a practice because I never want to go back to that bondage again. No. Right. Right. And it's life, life is too short. It's too short. It's too short. It's too we, short. I want to enjoy the flowers, enjoy the sunlight. Like it's like mm -hmm. unforgiveness is like such a veil over your eyes. It is. It's like it's like cataracts. It's like yes. such a veil. You don't see the beauty in things. That's, that's it. Why I'm so passionate about this. I'm so passionate. When people ask me to come and speak on it, I think I'll put it on Facebook. Look. I teach forgiveness. And if your people at your church or your organization, I will come. It ain't about no money, ain't about no fame, no clout. I want people to experience the freedom that you and I have because it's yeah. just you, you, you did. Because all the facial expressions and all what you did, I'm like, yo, that's what it is. <laughs> it is. It is. And, and, and I'm you excited. You, yeah. Y'all, audience, she didn't work some things out. And if you ain't never worked it out, you won't understand our shenanigans and our sound effects and our non-verbals. But when you did, those of you who have, you understand all of this. We like, oh, yeah, because that's exactly what it is. Yes, yes. And it's it beautiful. Is. And it's what God wants for us. Yeah. You cannot yeah. have the Ephesians 2.10 life outside of forgiveness. You can't. Yeah. You yeah. cannot and have the life that he, and you all read that Ephesians 2.10, read it in the Amplified Bible. And I mean, yes. you cannot yeah. have that life outside of forgiveness. Yeah, you can't. It, it, it's just the truth. It's just the truth. I'm telling you, because sometimes, and don't let that seven times 70 scare y'all. Because <laughs> when I first heard it, I was like, oh, that ain't. That's that too ain't, much. I ain't about doing that. Turn other two either. No, I'm busting you in your nose hit me and see what happened. I tell you, my, my mentor, um, Lolo, she always tell me, she's like, girl, you came a long way, baby. She always say it all the time. And I'd be like, you must've been, must been off the hook. You must've been off the hook. I was, I was, <sighs> look, <laughs> my friend Deanna, God rest her soul. She used to be like, she just my friend. She just my friend. We can't take you nowhere. And it was because I had so much anger and yeah. a self righteous thought and come on ego and and it's like they did this and I don't care about you because I'm gonna do it. It was like, girl, what is wrong with you? I know my great grandmother probably was like, what is wrong with you? You know, and and then it just when I started looking, God started working on me, and I got help mm -hmm. because even though I had gave my life to Christ. And, yeah. and decided to walk the Christian walk, I still had stuff down in me that didn't stop me from walking the Christ-like walk, but it stopped me from being free, like you said. Tell the free, truth. And free to be used. Please, please get what she said. Mm -hmm. She walked with Christ, but she had stuff in her. Please don't let that just go over your head. 
Yeah. She walked with Christ, but there were still things in her. We think because that goofy song, my hands look new, my feet do too. No, they still ashy. You still need petroleum jelly. Don't get lotion. That's not going to help you. Petroleum jelly. You need, you need yeah. super, the super Crisco is still the same. And we don't even decide to forgive. And then it's just magically delicious. It is a process. And I love how you are taking us through your process and you are sharing what your friends were saying, like, ooh, and you are very aware on the other side, like, I was angry, I was this, I was that. Oh, you can call that thing out. And now you you see it very readily in other people, not judgmental, yeah. but you just recognize it like, oh, okay, I, I, I've been there. I used to be that. And you be looking like, was it that? Did I look that bad when, when, I, when I was that angry? Yeah. Was I talking that bad? Like, was I like, it's like, what was that Peanuts character with that, that, um, he had that puff of smoke around him? Oh, Linus? Like, uh, yeah. That, it's that, like Linus. That, that was me. And <laughs> that, that was me. Oh I'm serious. It, you know, on my best day, thinking I'm all that and the other, I still had that little ugly that was mm. just trailing behind me. Yeah. And that's how the adversary gets you. You know, mm -hmm. he gets you. It's like that little ugly that's just trailing behind you. And you think, oh, but I'm a Christian now. And then Jesus. you still for a minute and it just covers you. Jesus. And that's when you'd be like, oh, you'd be, oh, God, what did I do? How did that come out my mouth? Jesus. It's, it's not that you have to be perfect, but it's because you haven't understood how to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you said, and forgive others for their transgressions. That forgive us in the prayer and the Lord's yeah, prayer. Yeah. Those aren't just words. You have to think about it because it will help pull you out it will. of your mess. Cause it will. This mess comes every day. It will. Man. It will. And God will meet you right where you are. Nothing is repelling to God. And, and, and a lot of times we, we do things in an effort to like, Oh, I know God is not going to love me after that. I know he's not going to help me after that. Nothing can repel him. When you accept his son, Jesus, yes. and you begin to reveal to him and you begin to start your healing journey of, of which things he already knows about, there is nothing that he will not get down in the dirt with you and, and help you bear and help you work out just day by day when we talk about this forgiveness thing. Just day by day, God is right there rooting for you. What better person to have in your peanut gallery? Okay. But God said, you can do this. And you're like, what? You ain't going to trust the one who made you, who's telling you that you can do it. He made you. And he's telling you, you can do it. And you're like, mm. I'm telling you, Terry K, if I had to wrap it up in one word, it's willingness. It is willingness to show intention on a forgiveness journey. It is not a one-time thing. Will you get mad about it sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. I call those checkpoints. Yeah. There were a few times where I got mad. And God said, now, what would you tell the women in your group? I said, well, I would tell them to make the decision to forgive again. He said, that's what you do. And right at that moment, even with anger in my heart, even with confusion, even with a little disdain in him, like, Ugh, I can't believe this is happening right now. I still made a decision right there at that checkpoint knowing that the process was not a one hit of quitting. It wasn't a once for all decision. I would have to make the decision over and over again to continue on the journey of forgiveness. It is willingness. It is intention. It is empowerment. You have a choice. You can be free. You can be free. You can. You can. You can. Well, gee, I hate that our time is up. But I want Reverend Chloe for you to tell people how they can get in touch with you or if you're going to be in any upcoming events so they can come see you in action. Because I'm telling you, I've seen it. It's amazing. She gives you work to do. And if you do the work, you can get to where you need to be. So the floor is yours. Tell people what they can do, how they can yes. get to well, they can find me on Facebook or Instagram with my name, Clotea, C-L-O-T-E-A, Mac, M-E-D. Um, or you can visit my website and leave me a message there at cloteamac.com. Um, but just reach out to me. Reach out to me. I am touchable. It's very important that we're touchable. So reach out to me, message me, leave me a message on my website. 
Um, I have something coming up in April, but I can't remember the specifics, but I'll be posting everything that I do. I post it on my social media. So um, reach out to me if you feel like you need more work. I do individual sessions as well. There have been individual sessions where I do with people who want the individual work of forgiveness and they want a more intimate setting. I go to families. So I come to families like God said, you know how you do Mary Kay? And I'm like, "Mm mm-hmm. He's like, I want you to do that. Have them to set up. And people be like, oh, girl, my cousin coming, my best friend coming. And so I've gone into houses and taught forgiveness. Bless you. And so whatever you need to get you free, I'm that girl. I'm going to help. It's going to be me. Come on, Jesus. We going we going down on Buck out of day. Come on. We going. Mm-hmm. So he comes with me and Good. just empowers me to empower you. So yeah. just reach out to me. C-L-O-T-E-A Mac. M-A-C-K. And thank you so much, Terry K, for oh. having me. I had a great time early. I'm a morning person. Me but too. Really, I, my kids be like, Mom, get out of my room. It's too early. I'm like, no, it's not. It's a bright day. The Lord has given us new mercy and loading us with benefits today. <laughs> A benefit is can you get out? Can you wait to afternoon? Okay. <laughs> They'd be like, please. <laughs> but thank you so much. And I'm going to have so all Reverend Close information at the end of the show. So make sure you stay and write it down. Get your pen and paper. Mm-hmm. And I just appreciate you. This woman Anytime. has got God's grace and blessing Anytime. and anointing on her. So you guys need to follow her and reach out and tell a friend. Mm-hmm. Tell a friend because we all are given the grace from God. If you don't think you're given grace, you don't understand that you woke mm. up this morning with something to do. Mm. There's something to do. Don't waste your time because mm. you never know when your time is done and you go on to glory. And, you know, so it, it's all important right now. The right now is important. Yes. yes. So, Thank you so much. Thank you, darling. And we'll talk again because we, we got some stuff to talk about. We, we do. We need to go out and eat, eat. Get us a little snack, a little cup of coffee or something, girl. Eat. I love to eat. Me too. God bless you, darling. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> I mean, I got to get this stopped. <laughs>